Hey guys, so we're going to take a look at Final Fantasy XII Collector's Edition on the PlayStation 2. And there are actually three reasons why I want to do this. One, because my original unboxing of this in 2011, I think, um, <laughs> was not very good. And of course that was back using my old camera, so I want to do it in HD. Uh, two, this is just a really, really nice package. Uh, and three, of course, the Final Fantasy XII Zodiac Age uh, HD re-release came out recently. So I thought it was nice to kind of look back at the original version and uh, maybe compare this collector's edition to the new one. So as you can see, we've got this very nice steelbook here. Uh, this is the American version, I should say. I imported this at the time. And uh, you can see we've got this great artwork of a judge on here. Uh, yeah, Yoshitaka Amano always does fantastic work. Um, the judges are amazing designs to start with, so yeah, his brush strokes and everything just really, really bring out the coolness of that design. And of course we've got, you know, the classic Final Fantasy logo in front of a giant 12. Uh, and of course that is actually sort of embossed, so it's, uh, you know, got a bit of depth to it. Honestly, it's, it's just a really, really nice box. So on the side here then, we have a Final Fantasy 12 collector's edition. Unfortunately my copy has actually gotten a little bit worn, which is interesting, considering it's just been sitting on a shelf. Uh, it hasn't really actually, like, it hasn't ever fallen or suffered any damage, so I guess these just weren't made to last quite as well, unfortunately. And then on the back here, uh, we have a pretty minimalist uh, sort of back of the box. You can see we've got uh, Vane and Larsa, uh, the two brothers of House Solidor from the game up there. Uh, and we've got a bunch of artwork of various airships, uh, most of which in this game are actually named after the classic Final Fantasy summons like Ifrit and Shiva. Okay, so you can see actually there's also uh, some buildings down there. It's kind of hard to really make out what everything is or what it's representing. Uh, but it does look very, very stylish. And of course, discover the secret that will unravel an empire. Final Fantasy XII is certainly uh, one of the more political of the Final Fantasy games. Okay, and of course it talks about the bonus DVD features that came with this collector's edition. So you had developer interviews, history of Final Fantasy featurettes, art gallery, and US and Japanese trailers. It was a nice little disc, honestly. There's a... The main thing I remember is this weird, slightly weird announcer. Uh, sort of this over-dramatic uh, American announcer that was on it. But uh, I, I think it had some cool interviews and also a fun little retro, uh, retrospective on the series. Because this is a point in history where the games weren't quite as readily available as they are now. Uh, because, like, for example, Far Thirsty 3 still hadn't actually been released, I don't believe, uh, when this came out in the West on DS. So uh, seeing footage of you know, the original Final Fantasy 3 was quite, <laughs> you know, quite confusing at the time. Okay, so here we've got our disc, and you can see that everything is done in a really nice way. It's a very stylish package. So on the disc here, of course, we've got the same artwork from the front cover of the box, showing the judge. And again, this is like really nice lighting and colouring. It's a really great print job on the disc. And then, down here, we have the bonus disc, and you can see that we've actually got uh, some crystals. And of course, the crystals are supposed to represent each of the games. Uh, so you've got... You know, the crystal there uh, representing 12, and I, I suppose all the others just kind of stretch back into the past for all the other games. But if we can actually lift this up, which, you know, without breaking the disc ideally, there we go. You can see we actually get this uh, close-up of Vane and Larsa, as well as all the judges up the top. And this is a little bit tricky, because actually I don't want to scratch my discs, but if we then remove the manual... Hang on a second... It's a very thick manual and held in very, very well. Uh, we see it, we actually have sort of the, you know, the opposing sides. So we've got all our playable characters on this side. So we've got Van, Bush, uh, Ash, uh, Penelo, Balthia, and Fran. And of course on the other side of the box we have all the villain characters. As well as of course the Far Fantasy 12 logo. And something that says Steelbook and uh, link to steelbook.com. I, I guess, I actually never realized that. I guess Steelbook are just a company. Have it produce these, but anyway. So moving on, we have our manual, and this is a very nice, fancy, full color, but very stylized manual. So uh, as you can see, we've got all the usual information handling your PlayStation 2 format disc. Um, we have these little sort of, I don't know, cutaways at the bottom of each page uh, with the judges and the artwork and logo. And we've got this gorgeous artwork of cities here. Uh, so that's the, I believe, the Imperial City from uh, the end of the game there. And we've got all these uh, different sections listed down here. It's very artfully set up. 
So you can see on the left pages we have the logo, and on the right side we have some artwork. So we've got some very cute artwork there of uh, Van and Ash. Uh, or Ash, or I, I, I'm not really actually sure how to pronounce her name in the moment. It makes sense when I hear it in the game, but uh, I get very sort of hung up on her name. Uh, we've got some actual renders in the background, all looking very nice. Uh, we've got some character artwork down here, some CG renders. We've got some fantastic artwork. Uh, this is actually the full version of the artwork of uh, Van and Ash, where they have, uh, you know, they're looking at some airships in the sky above, and that looks very cool. And of course, we've got the story about a world called Evilis. Evilis, of course, being uh, a very now very large universe uh, under Square Enix's control, um, containing many games. But then we actually have our character breakdowns. So, of course, uh, we have the character's name, their race, so human, of course, being human, um, and also their age. And it's one thing that always does confuse me, uh, is that, you know, Balfir is supposed to be 22 in this game. Balfir, yeah, the fact that Balfir is actually younger than me seems very strange, because Balfir feels like a much older character. He feels more like Bash to me, uh, in that sort of age bracket, but anyway... <laughs> and of course, Fran is age unknown, and they make a little joke about that in the game. Okay, so we get some screenshots of the game in action, as well as, of course, explaining all the various mechanics. And this is quite a mechanically complex game, if you get right down to it. I'm actually... You know, I, I believe I said in the 2011 unboxing when I did it that I'm, I've never really been able to get into Final Fantasy XII. I've, had a, I've never really uh, connected with the game or enjoyed its mechanics. Um, and because of that, I actually never finished it. I'm actually playing through it right now. The HD re-release uh, gave me an excuse to jump back. Uh, in the P into the PS2 version, I should say, actually, not the HD version. Uh, I don't have money for that right now. But um, I'm actually I'm kind of starting to finally understand how it all works and understand the license system and it all clicks. Uh, I feel like I've you know, tried to get through the game enough times that I actually have an understanding now of the license system and the Gambit system and stuff like that. Um... I still think there's a lot of very poorly designed elements of the game. Um, I definitely think that uh, having the treasure chests being randomized uh, was a very bad idea, because it really makes it... You know, it, it, rewarding the player is now a matter of RNG, and so many times in like guides that I've looked up, there are so many great pieces of equipment that I, I could have gotten, and I haven't gotten a single drop ever in the entire game f you know, so far uh, that I could have gotten. So I, I think... That was definitely a big mistake, and I think the license board system limiting your equipment, I think that was a mistake as well, although I'm I'm sort of, you know, I, I figured out a way to handle it now at least, which I, I couldn't really quite get my hand, uh, head around last time, or my last several times playing this. I've actually, I have really been trying to actually get through this game since 2005, but, uh, you know, I, I, as I say, it's, it's finally starting to click with me, and I do really love the story and the characters and the world. Uh, certainly visually it's a, an incredible looking PlayStation 2 game. And musically, I mean, Hitoshi Sakamoto always does phenomenal work, and this is no exception. I love it. It's very tactics-inspired. Uh, but, um, you know, it, it's just one of those things where I, I think the game's actual mechanical systems uh, weren't as quite as thought out as they could have been. But anyway, we get some guide stuff here telling us about, you know, exploring Rabanasta, the first town, uh, things like that. And then we get a massive list of credits, which was, you know, quite a sight in 2005. I want I will say, this is one of uh, the last games I remember that actually still use CG movies uh, in sort of the you know, PS1 style. Final Fantasy XIII, to that game's credit, actually still had a few of them, uh, but this game actually used them pretty regularly. And it's really nicely woven in. Uh, there's actually... Yeah, the way they cut, sort of cut to them is very, very natural, and you don't sort of get the jarring effect. It just sort of enhances scenes that would have been impossible on the PS2's technology. And finally, we get a registration card. So you can fill out this card and return it to be entered in Square Enix's monthly drawing. You could win a cool game! And of course, it's got a, you know, which Square Enix games do you own? And they go uh, back to Final Fantasy VII and basically everything after that that was in the PS1 and PS2 generations. So, uh, <laughs> I own many of those. <laughs> but, uh, of course, uh, not much point in me sending this in, well, now, uh, or even at the time, of course, because I was not in the US. And you see we've got the uh, address there, and we also have this page here about, yeah, for information and services by Square Enix uh, Incorporated, go to www.squareenix.com. Good stuff. 
and then just a black back of the manual. Anyway guys, so that was your look at the Final Fantasy XII Collector's Edition on the original PS2. As I say, uh, it's definitely got some mechanical problems in my opinion, but at the same time, the story and characters and world and graphics and music are all really compelling elements of the game. So I think that it certainly does deserve to be a numbered Final Fantasy, and it, you know, it, it really depends, I guess, on how you like your RPGs. But I think if you're looking for something a bit different, uh, you know, this took a lot of its cues from MMOs, which I don't particularly like. But at the same time, it did a lot of very different things with them. And of course, as I say, the, the, yeah, the sort of narrative elements driving it uh, and the world elements driving it are also quite compelling. So you know, if you're looking for something a bit different in the RPG sphere and you just want you know, a good linear story RPG, uh, then maybe check out the HD version. I know that they made uh, quite a number of improvements to the game. Uh, but just sort of streamline it and make it a little bit more manageable for your first time through. But anyway, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.